Hey, how you doing? In this video, we're taking a PlayStation 2 network adapter and we're going to convert the IDE port with a SATA port using this adapter here. And in doing so, I'll be able to use a hard drive that I've had lying around. And we're gonna just go ahead and jump right into this because I'm all about just getting straight to the point. And we'll go ahead and take off these Phillips head screws first. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this little piece out. It's just gonna tell me roughly where all the screws go. And of course, if you choose not to watch me unscrewing everything, please feel free to skip the video. Now these all appear to be the same size, so I'm gonna go ahead and group those together. The next two appear to be much smaller, so we'll drop it down to a zero. And that looks like it's going to work just fine. Yes, yes it is. Okay, we'll take off that one. That one's a bit of a longer Phillips head screw. And we'll do this last one here. And theoretically speaking, we should now have the ability to pop off this plate here. There we go. We'll go ahead and set that off to the side and see what we are working with. So this adapter is essentially going to replace this right here. And it appears we have a ribbon cable off in the back that we will more than likely have to undo. But yes. Yes, that is what's going to happen. <clears throat> Looks like it did come with a set of instructions. Uh, maybe we'll look into that, maybe not. Maybe we will. How about we just go through it? Just for the sake of the video, it includes two Phillips screws, two spacers. It is suggesting we remove the plate, that metal plate, which we have already. And then below is what this is what we're working with here is gonna look like. And we're going to remove these four Torx screws because PlayStation decided to go from Phillips to Torx. And I believe that's a T7. And then after that, we'll remove the IDE circuit board. And we'll read the rest once we get to that spot. Once we get to that point, we'll go ahead and read the rest. I believe off the top of my head, it is a T7 and it indeed is. So let's go ahead and remove it. Excellent. And it does look like we have only two left. I mean, this really is a fairly simple project if you wanted to take it on yourself really not much effort is going to be going into this if you've never done anything like this before i'm fully confident you would be able to do so yourself all right so theoretically these two pieces come right off and it doesn't appear to be held by anything else, just making sure. So I'll go ahead and pull it up. There we go. So here is our ribbon cable, and here is the power supply for the IDE. So let's go ahead and remove the power supply because that is going to be the easiest thing. Simply grab it and pull back. That wasn't supposed to happen. And this came off along with it. And we are back, apologies, the camera decided to stop recording because it froze. So we are continuing on. The spring that just popped out, it does just go right here on the far right hand corner where that post is. We're just gonna place that back here. We're gonna take these two pieces and set them aside. However, before we do that, you wanna go ahead and take that cable off and we're going to reuse it on this adapter here. 
I'm probably gonna hang on to those two other pieces just in case. I mean, it is pretty hard to find original pieces for games that are getting older now. And you never know if you need it or not. So let's go ahead and place this on. And we'll go ahead and twist that around. And just wanna be careful with the ribbon cable when you're putting it back in. Looks like it was pushed back in. You wanna pull this black retainer back to allow the ribbon cable to slide in very nicely and while pressing up against the ribbon cable carefully it is delicate you want to push that black retainer back in which is going to pinch this cable in place and we've essentially swapped out the IDE for SATA connector the next step we're going to do is take two of these spacers because that is what it is calling for. Let's go ahead and place this board back in. It just gets pinched by these two clips on the side and make sure it is nice and flat and all the holes are aligned so when we go back to screw in the Phillips head screwdrivers, that uh, screws, with the screwdriver, it will fit just fine. It did come with these Phillips head screws. They appear to be the exact same length as the Torx. And because I just wanna keep this as OEM as possible, I'm not going to utilize the screws that were provided. I'm just going to utilize the original Torx head screws that came with it. And, and reinstall them back and before we do so, let's put that spacer there, get ourselves a little organized. We're going to take these two spacers here and place them on the outer edge of this connector here, okay, where this, where this circuit board is, this adapter that we are replacing it with. You wanna place the two spacers where the threaded holes are and then utilize the Torx screws to fasten them in place. Now what I'm going to do is place both screws in at the same time and line them up so I don't have these spacers moving around. Once I get it on there, it's gonna be a little tricky. It may require some finesse and patience to line those holes up. I'm actually going to take my T7 bit and insert it in the screw and get it started and then drop this one into place carefully. And hopefully I'll be able to get both of them to cooperate. Don't want to strip it, so I'm just taking my time until I feel it. And I'm going to repeat the process over here. And we appear to be golden. Excellent. I'm going to back this one out just one more time, make sure it feels as if it's been set in place and firmly. Tighten it back. Okay, double check that work over here. And we are all set. Everything appears to be perfect. It does look like it came with a spare spacer there, but we're not gonna use that. We'll actually put it back in the little baggie. I am going to reinstall the other Torx head screws in the original spot where the IDE power connector was, so I don't lose them. And it may be a good idea for you to do the same thing if you choose to. And we are pretty much all set with that. I'm just going to place these spare screws 
back in the baggie so they don't get lost because they don't appear to be magnetic. So I don't know what these are made of. <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and take our plate and just place it back on like so. Hopefully everything fits. It doesn't look like it does just yet. Let's see. There we go. That is a wonderful fit. I'll go ahead and start those two. These are the skinniest Phillips head screws, if you were curious. And those were a size zero Phillips head. Go ahead and fasten those down. That should hold the plate down for the most part. Excellent. We're going to switch over to a size 2 Phillips head. You always want to make sure you're utilizing the correct bit because if you're not, you have the potential of stripping your screws. And that's no fun. Because then you'll have to deal with a strip screw. They're not impossible to remove, but they are a pain. As far as how tight I'm securing the screws in place, I'm honestly just going by feel. You obviously don't want to go too tight where you break the board or crack it. But you don't want to be too loose either. Just honestly, hard to tell. Just use your better judgment. And just like that, we have successfully converted the original IDE connector with a SATA connection. And for the purposes of the video, I will show you that it now should connect with our SATA drive. We have a power on the right hand side. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all set to go. And I will go ahead and take it a step further and move all this out the way and grab myself my PlayStation 2. We're going to go ahead and pop this cover off the expansion bay. We'll be using that for a while. And essentially we're taking this, this connection right here is going to plug in to the PlayStation there, which is what transfers the data from point A to point B. Everything seems to fit snugly. Come back and grab ourselves a flathead. We'll grab the biggest one there. And we shall tighten this on. Now, if you know, you know the reason why I'm doing this. If you don't, well, it's not that you can't use an IDE drive to install the MIG boot. However, I chose to go with a SATA because it's what I had on hand and it is what I'm going to utilize to install a free MIG boot. And if you're interested in seeing that video, just leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.